today's Stop Coal Seam Gas Community Conference. We've got, uh, I believe, over a dozen politicians from various levels of government welcome, but most importantly, welcome to everyone in the community who cares enough to come along and get some more information about this, this topic. Uh, firstly, I'd like to invite to the podium Mark Loxham and Lyle Davis, local UN men, to welcome us to country.
either statewide or regional level. Second, Council acknowledges in this there is widespread local community concern about and opposition to CSG in the Yellow Warren. Council urges the State Government to rule out CSG activities in water catchment areas in Wollongong City, in the City of Wollongong. Fourth, point, uh, the above points be included in a submission by Wollongong Council to the New South Wales Legislative Council State Committee acquiring coal seam gas, and that the final submission be endorsed by councillors when prepared. Fifth, council officers provide information updates to councillors on submissions to the New South Wales Legislative Council Standing Committee inquiring policy gas that relate to the terms of reference and more specifically to the, the economic and social implications of CSG activities including those which affect local government providing or local government provision of local or regional infrastructure and local planning control mechanisms. Sixth, Council appeared at the barrel hearing which took place on the 8th of December and other hearings where appropriate. I would now ask the councillors, the Wollongong Council, who are present to stand so they can be acknowledged as a team that supported those resolutions. Brothers and sisters have occupied this space for a long time, and I'd like to see. 
see them continuing to do so with us living in harmony. I am mindful of the fact that we always need to question. To me, this isn't just about coal seam gas, it's about democracy. And when governments do not listen, and powers that seem to have the right or think they have the right to just tread on people's lives and our community in such a free and open way is not and is not adequate, not appropriate, and as Lord Mayor of the City, I will not tolerate it. I don't mind making decisions based on evidence, but the evidence isn't here. There are many question marks and many concerns that I still have personally. But let me also say, that democracy at times will not mean that I will come into conflict with you over other issues. I know that this is always a debate, seeking the best for our community, and it's good to have debate, energy, thought, research, and current ideas on how we progress. I don't necessarily think I'll always get it right, but as your Lord Mayor and the Lord Mayor of this wonderful city, I want to say that I will do my best to represent you to fight for your interests and make sure that we have a better and sustainable city and community, a livable city, where we respect our place between the escarpment and the sea. But what I cannot understand is why it has to be on water catchment land. When we build desalinisation plants at a time when we are trying to cut back on fossil fuel emissions, and when we have a beautiful piece of land a great area, the lungs of the Illawarra, and also an opportunity to place where we can gather up the water that sustains us without the power generation, cost and power generation, and also what I perceive is nothing more than a waste when we have the sun to do so and the beautiful landscape to filter it. May we all leave more enlightened, but also may the city of Wollongong prosper. Thank you. A breath of fresh air. Thank you very much, Gordon. Uh, what we'd like to do now is show one, uh, show a video which, which sets the scene a little bit and this, this was a newsreel uh, that we collected um, in the middle of last year. It has the potential to contaminate waterways and pose a serious fire risk, but surprisingly little is known about the full extent of plans for coal seam gas mining in the region. With 15 exploratory gas wells now approved in the northern Illawarra, it is quickly becoming a contentious issue. Residents are mobilising, planning a major protest to send a clear message to the government. It's fast becoming a very lucrative industry, but the mining of valuable gas found in coal seams underground is sparking fear across regional communities. While there's still very little information about all of the effects of, of coal seam gas mining, we're seeing it pop up all over the place. With little research on the environmental effects, science experts fear the mining could have devastating consequences, including water contamination and the constant threat of fire from gas leakages. Coal seam gas mining always involves contamination contaminated water. So water is highly saline that comes out of the coal seam and it can also contain toxic and radioactive compounds, heavy metals and endocrine disruptors. But what has come as a shock to Illawarra residents is that it's happening in their own backyard. Fifteen exploratory wells have been approved for drilling in the northern suburbs. They surround Warrenora Dam with some on Sydney Catchment Authority land. Can you mention the area that's greatly loved by the whole of the Illawarra township um, to be threatened? The revelation has outraged locals in the region who have been working to spread the word. We launched a massive information campaign where we letterboxed 30,000 houses with information leaflets, as I say, just to explain to people exactly what was going on as far as we could tell. Now they are stepping up their campaign, 
organising a major protest, calling on the government to place a moratorium on all coal seam gas mining. Until the outcome of a Royal Commission or a very thorough public inquiry that goes into all the impacts of coal seam gas mining. The government says it recognises the immediate need to strengthen the assessment of mining and coal seam gas extraction and its impact on water resources. It promises that process is underway. We're now working on uh, transitional arrangements to be able to put in place a uh, strategic regional lands policy which will balance uh, the, the interests of uh, business and but most importantly the community. Hundreds are expected to turn out to the protest at Ostermere Beach on May 29. If you want to join you are encouraged to register your interest by emailing info at stopcsgillawarra.org. Claire Dressler, Win News. Okay, before we continue, I uh, just need to read out a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, the toilets uh, are through the back door to my left, that back door to my left. To go through that door, you will need to enter back in the way that you came. In the unlikely case of an emergency, the exits are the four doors of, at each corner of the room with green lights above them. If there is an emergency, the town hall's manager will put on his hard hat and run away real quickly. <laughs> no, that's not the thing. Uh, he will tell us what to do and we'll follow him. I'd like you to do something, please. Could everyone close your eyes for 20 seconds? Actually, do this. Close your eyes. And think about what you value the most in life. What are the most important aspects in your life? Thank you. You probably thought about things like health, relationships, your kids, the environment. That means you were thinking about things that have to do with your heart, to do with the community, uh, to do with quality of life, to do with the future. Things that are based on quite powerful values. And that's why most of you people are here today. On the other side of the fence, I have not yet met anyone in the CSG industry who does it or makes a statement that we're not being paid. There's a pretty significant divide in those two, two value propositions. Now, revenue and money is, is certainly important for government as well, and it's important in the story. Um, governments say that uh, energy security is also an issue. There are certainly other alternatives. What we need is governments to stop being influenced by the industry and listen to the, and Gordon will say this, and listen to the people who represent them. We need governments to be truly forward thinking, to make decisions not based on short parliamentary cycles, but decisions based on our future and the future of our children. We need genuine leadership that reflects what's in the hearts and the brains of the community, and that's people just like you. A couple of weeks ago, half a dozen of us went up to uh, Oakdale. There was a, a drilling exercise, an exploratory drill well drilled up there with very little community consultation, and people were upset. 250 people came together to the Oakdale Workers' Club, and we went up there. Now, there was a small number of people in that group, there's a personal feeling, that made me feel like uh, I was an activist to um, an out of towner that had come up there to stir up some trouble. And I really thought about that afterwards. Um, that is the very first time in one year and one month since five of us sat around the table and said that we need to do something about this, that I actually felt like an activist. We talked, we talked about it in our management committee meeting, and we agreed that most of us on that committee have never been involved in a community campaign like this before in our lives. And we're only doing that because we believe we need to make a difference. This campaign is about ordinary people just like you saying no to this, especially when the research on the risks has not been done yet, and it certainly hasn't been done properly. So what we're saying is 
that our kids, our home, our health, our water are more important than money for a few. I'm normally reasonably comfortable in front of a microphone, uh, but today I'm, I'm extremely nervous and I can tell you my knees are banging together. Um, and it's not because I'm speaking, it's because I think this campaign has now come towards a tipping point. It's been building and building. If everyone, there's a couple of thousand, or only 3,000 people on our list that are supporters of the program at the moment. If every one of those people goes out and engages 10 or a dozen other people, this voice will get too loud for the government to continue not listening to us. Now, uh, you will all have a, a page there, you don't need to grab it now, but there's a page that says it's what you can do to stop CSG. My ask of you today is that when you leave here in the next couple of days, is just to spend a little bit of quiet time and have a look through that and, and consider what contribution you can make for this campaign. If you believe in it, the only thing that's going to get results is us to act in those beliefs.